It looks like any other desert at first glance. But look closer and you'll see – an entire underground town! Why would anybody want to live here, out in the middle of nowhere? What are they hiding, and could there be other strange cities like it? Back in 1915, a boy found an opal gemstone in the middle of the desert in South Australia. This discovery attracted attention to this place and changed its history. Just a year after that, miners arrived at the outback, ready to try their luck at finding opals. Today, the city of Coober Pedy is known as the opal capital, making up most of the world supply. As soon as the miners arrived at Coober Pedy, they were met by a harsh, unbearable climate. During the summer months, temperatures can exceed 100 degrees Fahrenheit in the shade. With little rain and few trees, there was no place to hide from the desert heat, except underground. The miners dug caves into the hillsides and set up camp in these so-called dugouts. As a bonus, they also got protection from desert sandstorms. So, let's take a tour, shall we? A typical underground house there is a three-room cave with a kitchen, a living room, and a bathroom. Other than the rock walls and lack of windows, you could easily mistake it for a normal above-ground home. They have all the amenities – sewage, water, and electricity. There's often a separate entrance to the mine from these houses, so miners don't even need to go outside to get to work. Today there are about 2,500 residents in Coober Pedy. Fortune seekers from all over come in hopes of striking it big with opals. Some hard work and a life spent underground wouldn't scare away these true adventure seekers. Finding a valuable opal is no easy task. Opals come in different colors and sizes and are sometimes hard to value. The most commonly found is colorless. Don't get too excited if you find one. Chances are you won't even get a dollar for it. Play of color opals are another story. Those are very rare and precious. The largest and most valuable opal was actually found here in Coober Pedy. The bowling ball-sized gem weighs almost 8 pounds. It was dubbed the Olympic Australis and valued at $2.5 million. Cooper Petey also produces large quantities of black opal, the rarest type. Over time, the city of Cooper Petey became a popular tourist attraction. People from all over the world come here to see the largest source of opals on Earth and take a look at the curious underground city. And a real city it is. It has underground stores, cafes, art galleries, and even hotels. Just be careful when you're out and about touring the area. The ground is sprinkled with huge holes that go deep underground. These are mine shafts, and there are signs everywhere warning of their presence. You might not even see one until you're right up on it. Even if you're not interested in precious gems, Coober Pedy has tons of cool sights. For example, the world's longest fence goes through the city. The dingo fence runs almost entirely across Australia's southeastern quarter. It's nearly 3,500 miles long, more than enough to span the US coast to coast. You can also check out the breakaways. As you stare at these beautiful mesas and hills, the desert sun scorching on your neck, it's hard to believe all of this was underwater some 70 million years ago. The Peruvian city of La Rinconada is the exact opposite of Coober Pedy. From underground on the outback to 16,000 feet high in the Andes, it's the highest human habitation on the planet. But like the Australian opal capital, this place went from a small village to a bustling town of 17,000 when people found gold in the mountains. It's not for the faint of heart, though. Some outsiders find it hard to breathe because of the town's extreme elevation. You probably won't notice anything special about this small Polish village. But something's missing here. There are no boys. Not a single male has been born in almost a decade. Locals say the number of newborn boys has always been abnormally low. Scientists still have no answer to the nature of this phenomenon. But village officials have promised a reward to the couple who has the first boy. The city of Sentinel de las Bodegas in Spain attracts tourists from all over the world. It's so famous because this town is built into a huge rock. Walking along many of the streets, you won't see the sky above your head when you look up – just an overhanging rock ceiling. Don't worry about it collapsing. 
these rocks have remained like this for centuries. Imagine getting to the other end of your city in your slippers and pajamas. That wouldn't be strange if you lived in Whittier, Alaska. Most of its residents live under the same roof. Well, it helps when the population is only around 220 people. Their hometown, literally, is a 14-story building called Begish Towers. This town's sole building incorporates a police station, post office, hospital, grocery, and many other basic services. The only land-based entrance to Whittier is through a 2.5-mile single-lane tunnel, the longest highway tunnel in North America, mind you, that's closed at night. Another ultra-small town is in the middle of Arizona. Surrounded by the Grand Canyon, the village of Supai is almost isolated from the rest of the country. To get here, you need a helicopter, or you could try to walk. This is also the only town in the US to use mule mail. This village has a population of a bit over 200 people. But they do have a hotel if you're interested in visiting. And they have an amazing waterfall that you'd have to see in person to believe. And if you thought that was the smallest town out there, head to the village of Monoe, Nebraska. Population 1. Elsie Eiler is its single resident. She's also the mayor, the entire city council actually, librarian, salesperson, and tavern keeper. But she's not alone. The village became quite popular, so her friends from nearby towns and tourists visit Monowai all the time. Speaking of cold locations, how about the coldest of them all? Oymayakin is a small Siberian village where the lowest temperature in an inhabited area was recorded – minus 90 degrees Fahrenheit. That's colder than the average temperature on Mars. Fruit freezes into hard, colorful rocks, and water turns to ice instantly. But for the village's 500 residents, it's all just part of daily life. Hey, at least they have fair summer weather to look forward to. You'll immediately notice one thing about the city of Chefchaou in Morocco. All the houses and buildings are blue. There are a few explanations for why this is, one of them says blue resembles the sky. The other is less romantic. This color supposedly keeps mosquitoes away. If you travel to certain parts of China, you might think your plane accidentally landed on the wrong continent. China is full of entire copies of cities from around the world. The residents of Guangdong can enjoy an exact replica of the historic Austrian town of Hallstatt. And anyone in Shanghai can have a romantic dinner with the best view of the Eiffel Tower. Well, at least a copy of it. The port city of Tianjin has an outlet mall that looks just like an Italian village. China is also home to the largest ghost town in the world. Welcome to the city of Ordos. Although it was designed for more than a million people, it remained mostly uninhabited for years. When it was newly built, not many people could afford to settle down there. But in recent years, the situation has changed for the better, and now the former ghost town is becoming more populated. There's an entire town on the Caspian Sea about 60 miles from Baku, Azerbaijan. The industrial settlement of the oil rocks began with a single path that connected drilling platforms. Over the decades, it grew into a whole city that can house 2,000 people. It's got a road system, multi-story buildings, a cafeteria, a soccer field, and even some factories and workshops. Another community on the water can be found on Lake Maracaibo, Venezuela. But such unique houses aren't the strangest thing here. This place is the lightning capital of the world. Residents of this village can see lightning storms half the nights of the year. It can occur up to 280 times in a single hour. Many scientists have wondered about the cause of this everlasting storm. Most agree it's a result of winds from nearby mountains. I imagine it's quite scenic, a little scary, very loud, but pretty. 